Hello everybody and welcome to another RCT2 hacking tutorial video. Uh, today we are going to uh, branch out and do one of our first track rides. It's not a roller coaster. Uh, we are going to build a uh, double log flume. Um, a lot of the original um, arrow log flumes and, and plenty of others uh, had double side-by-side -side loading stations and also double drops. The double drop was to be able to increase capacity. You could run the boats closer together on the regular portions, but uh, on the drop sections, there would be alternating drops such that the boats could do the drop but not get too close so that they'd be affected by the wake of the boat behind it. So this is a pretty common thing. You'll see it on rides like uh, Coal Cracker at Hershey Park, for example. Um, <clears throat> now some log flumes have the circular station, which we'll do one of those when we build our rapids ride here. But uh, today we are going to look at how to do this as a double station. Now, before we get into it, I will say this is two separate rides, so you can see that there are two queue lines. This is something you're going to have to deal with. There, it is possible to do a single queue line on a log flume like this with some difficulty, and your layout is often very specific as far as what you can and can't do. Um, so we, we're going to avoid that, but uh, as a little preview of what's to come, we will have a one queue multi-ride hack coming up. Uh, probably next so uh, stay tuned for that um, so we've expanded a little bit our uh, little park here is ever growing so we filled up this whole area with a pretty dense package of little rides here and now we're going to expand over to this side for the log flume so a couple of things you need to keep in mind um, go into the cheats menu and I just check all of them just might as well. Um, usually I do not check allow building track at invalid heights because sometimes you can screw up something if you're not paying attention to it. Um, this time we need this so make sure you check that box. Um, so what we're going to do is basically build one of these at regular height, one of them at half height, and then we're going to adjust that second one such that it will sit at the same height as the other one. And then we're going to do another little hack. So one of the things you can see is that they're parking at slightly different uh, locations from each other. The reason behind that is that I wanted to take the ride and uh, desynchronize the station such that they didn't dispatch at the same time so that there was a little bit of, of gap between the two boats. So you can see that the next one that's going to go is the upper station. There we go. Uh, the way that we do this, if we look underground over here, is with this Virginia Reel uh, track which is synced to both stations but they are both um, uh, they are both synced to separate stations so basically this guy this tub controls which of these Virginia reels are or which of these log flume stations are dispatching at any one particular time so a little bit of an extra there just to keep the visual correct um, so anyway let's let's build a simple layout over here so what we're going to do is start and we will build the original layout you know, just as as you would so actually we're going to go ahead and build this without a station because we'll add this in a little bit later all right so i do maybe five there for a station and so log flumes can kind of be built in a lot of different ways there's a lot of ways to do it uh, many are built in a concrete trough others are built uh, in you know plenty of different ways but um we are uh, going to build our sort of more traditional arrow log flume. I like to put a little drop after every lift because usually they do disengage that lift in some, some way or another. Um, and then we kind of have some meandering a little bit, and then we're going to go up. Um, we were going to turn off the support limits just to go a little bit higher. Um, that's not uncommon that you'd find things like this. Um, and then we're going to go over. And then we're going to go ahead and drop this down. Ooh, that was a bigger drop than I had realized. Um, yeah, well, we'll just level it off right here. And then uh, what we're going to do is this one's going to be straight, and then the other one's going to come down. So what we did here, as you can see, is uh, the S-Bend uh, is for the left-hand track up top, and then for the right-hand track down at the bottom, it ensures that the whole thing both of these layouts are the same length exactly, um, just because we're alternating which one. If we had made this go S-bend into this drop, then it would be a slightly longer layout. Um, really doesn't matter 
Uh, you can do that, except for the dispatch intervals and things like that, because the one boat would catch uh, the other one if you have so many. I mean, really, if you look at this, this is too many boats for this ride. I just like to have the movement, and it's definitely a capacity hog um, as far as uh, queue line goes. Uh, guests love these things, so um, you can you can do with what that as you wish, but we're going to go ahead and set it up like this and then we will go through here and so that's glitching a little bit we'll just avoid that might be some other ride that i haven't dealt with and then we'll finish up with just a little drop here as we get back to actually i'm going to do a little bit here to remove some of these straight sections and we'll see why in just a little bit it's um it's part of uh, the um, uh, the ride that we're using. We're actually going to use a custom ride type for the second one. You don't have to, but I'll show you why we are in just a little bit. All right, so there's the first layout. We're going to leave the station off for a second. So now we're going to turn around, and we're going to go ahead and build the second one at half height. So we'll use shift and get it up here at half height. So <clears throat> uh, we're going to need our zero clearances to get through here. And really, now we're just going to be copying this layout. Pretty much exactly. So we're going to copy this all throughout and follow the whole thing. And you don't have to. If you want to make this go in different directions, you can do that. That's how you can do a rapids ride, for example, that looks like it has multiple paths. We, we don't need to. But now that we're at the top, we're going to go along and then we're going to do our drop, level it out, and then we are going to come back in this way and then turn the corner turn here do our other final little splash here and then and here we go okay so a couple things if you don't mind the dispatches, if you don't want a desynchronization on the dispatch, you're pretty much done. So if you don't want a desynchronization on the dispatch, you go in here and you can build your station, build your entrance and your exit. Both of these. <clears throat> and then you've got your first one here. We'll call this A side. And then we'll get this side, which we'll call B side. So A side is good to go. It's just a long blue. Uh, oop. Always remember to adjust your boats. And we're going to give this well, a single car, but we'll give it, say, eight boats. So that's done. Good to go. Um, we can test it, and it's going to do the same stuff. And then this guy... We can do the same treatment too. So we're going to lower this down, and then we're going to go in here and give it zero, and then we'll go back up and give this eight. So, as you can see, the boats here, the second level of boats, are operating at a slightly higher level than the other ones, obviously because we're at the half height. So, what we're going to do when you turn this to anything invisible, um, any of these other particular ride, you can see that it drops down. Now it doesn't drop the whole way. And you can see as you choose different stuff, it drops it to different levels. So it's really just kind of what you're comfortable with, um, whether it's say a drink stall, which is going to get us to uh, exactly the right height, or um, say an elevator, uh, which gets us to a little bit different height, but um, you will get, yes, definitely riding it if it's an elevator. Um, to all, all different kinds of stuff like this. And this one makes everything invisible, so all you have to do is go back through and you can rebuild um, this little section here of the drop. Now, nice thing as far as theming goes, because this guy is at the half height, we can build this forwards and we have no worry about this merging. So all we have to do is just go through and build this and... Uh, so now you have the visual there and you have your dummy track just sitting there already. Now, the difficult part comes if you want to desynchronize this because desynchronize requires syncing stations. 
So you'll notice that there is no option for synchronizing stations here, whereas on the log plume, uh, you do have that. Now, if you go back to the log plume, which we'll do here, we now have the option once again to synchronize stations. But of course, the boats are at the wrong height. So we can approach this in a couple of different ways. The vanilla way to do it, if you don't want to have um, any kind of custom elements in here, is you change this to the mini helicopter ride, and that gets them the closest of any ride that synchronizes stations, at least in the base game I checked. Um, I checked all the rides. So this, I did not check any expansion rides or anything like that, but I don't use them, so it's not, um, not a thing. But you can see that it's... Uh, just off a little bit. So uh, you would have to go through also and make every single one of these tiles invisible um, so you don't see the track. That is a pain and there's an easier way to do that through the magic of custom rides. So what we're going to do first of all is go through here and we are going to change this ride um, and change these boats here. So these boats are going to be the lowered log plume boats. So Rumi from New Element made these for me. And uh, he is a star with custom rides. He's very good. Um, and these will bring them to the right elevation. And you can see that it's off by a little bit right now. But remember, we need to make this invisible still. And we needed to have... Uh, we needed to have synchronized station mode, so you need to pick a ride that has that. So what we're going to do is pick the air-powered vertical coaster, which these boats are set so that when you do set it to the air-powered vertical coaster, you'll notice they are sitting exactly where they need to be. Now, the good thing about the air-powered vertical coaster is that there are not many elements on the ride. So the only spaces where uh, this is drawn are the straight sections. And you'll notice I kind of tried not to too, do too many straight sections on the ride which makes this a whole heck of a lot easier to go back in here, choose the one that's half tile higher, which you can see is air powered vertical coaster and just make it invisible. So just throw some null objects in there and in less than five minutes you're done. So that is the way to go about that as far as getting the boats at the right height. And you can see that this still has synchronization. So what we're going to do now is build our desync uh, for our ride. So. We're going to go back through here first of all, and let's turn this back to log plume <clears throat> for just a moment. One of the challenges with synchronization is that the um, open RCT has added some extra uh, surprises, I suppose, with um, synchronization. So it used to be that the station uh, had to be right next to the other one at the very front tile in order to synchronize. If it didn't do that, it didn't synchronize. Well now, I believe it's uh, eight tiles in either direction on either side, and it applies to the entire station platform, which um, is a little frustrating, not a move that I would have made, uh, or at least something that I would make as a toggle option, potentially. So what uh, we have to do to get around that is to offset our stations. So the uh, you can see here uh, on this guy uh, where we where this one is going to come park. Uh, so this uh, first one on this side, log boom one, is right at the front, right before the, the S bend. This one is uh, one back. These are only single tile stations. Um, I just did that because I wanted them as far up as we can. For the purposes of this, we're just going to go and do one in the way back here, and then we will do one in the front. So basically what you need to do is build the station so that they don't overlap in any way um, horizontally to each other. So this, this will work. All right, so now we'll build an entrance and exit, and I had to get clever with the entrance and exits on that other ride, so not, not a thing to worry too hard on. So we're going to take our Virginia Reel, and you can use any coaster. I just, for whatever reason, I use Virginia Reel for synchronizing. And we're going to pick somewhere that's not related to these, so we'll pick uh, over here, for example. And we're going to need to do the same thing when we build this guy by offsetting these stations so they do not overlap. So this is about the easiest option that you can do, set up like this. Okay, so now we're going to go back through and make this... Uh, single car, single train. So this is our control 
desynchronization um, ride over here. Um, so we are going to be able to control the dispatch time with this guy here. If you look at this one underneath, you will note that I've got dispatches uh, every two seconds because the amount of time that this takes to get all the way around means that um, that's kind of our hold time until we get. So two seconds plus this cycle is one dispatch interval for the log flumes itself. And you can see that the log flumes themselves are uh, essentially just um, leave after 10 seconds, just waiting. But because they are they are synchronized, um, which that one is there, you go that's synchronized. Um, they will um, they will wait. So um, let's do the the first thing that we're going to have to do is go through here and. Uh, we'll take our tile inspector and catch this first station, and then we're going to take this piece of track and we're going to copy it, which is what you do here. And we're going to go over here and we're going to paste it, and then I'm also going to raise this up to be level. I don't believe it has to be. I just do because it's it's neat that neater that way. All right, so then we're going to go through and I'll turn so you can see. We're going to take the other station here, take this track, copy it, put it here, paste it. I'm going to spin it around so it faces the same direction. Okay, so now these are all set. So we're going to go to the Virginia Reel and we're going to synchronize that. And we're going to go take a minimum wait of two seconds. Then we're going to take this log plume and this log plume and we are going to both synchronize this. We're going to get rid of that minimum waiting time because uh, we don't need it. The synchronization will control it. Um, so then we will open up our uh, right here, open up this, and open up this. Okay, so let's uh, build some, well, we can, we'll ignore that just a little bit. All right, so you can see that first one dispatched, and the other one is sitting over here waiting. And then you will see in two seconds, this one's going to go, and then that one uh, dispatches also. Um, the further apart these are synced, the closer these are going to be together. So this one is going to be a little closer to this guy than this one is to this one. You can see that right here just because our station is three tiles back of the other. Um, that's one of the main reasons that I made mine a single tile station just offset by a little bit. So now we'll go back in here and we're going to check. Oh, not that one. Uh, we will go back to Virginia Reel. And this one is going to become Air Powered Vertical Coaster. Uh, you can build your station in here the same way that you built the other one. And then you can also go back in here and take these entrances and lower them, make usable. Lower them and make usable. So now peeps can actually get to these once we build a pathway to it. Um, then we'll go through here and you just make all these bits invisible for the whole ride. So it doesn't take a ton of time. Um, and it... In my opinion, it looks nice when it's, when it's all wrapped up. Uh, so here we can see all the bits and pieces. And uh, there we go. So you get the idea. I won't do the rest of them there. But that is the way that you make the log loom. You can extrapolate that to plenty of other ideas for different things. Like I said, the only disappointment potentially is that you have two queue lines such as this. Uh, you could always theme one up as a fast pass line or... Um, hide the other one if you want to do that too. Um, one more note uh, on this as far as log flumes go in general is just track layering. So this is more of a visual thing and I typically don't get into visuals because you can do whatever you want however you want just whatever your preference is. I find the log flume trough to be awfully thin in the game so I like to layer. Um, I layer a couple of things. So you can see here I layer the uh, mini suspended coaster uh, underneath as sort of a spine. And you can't really see it here, but you can kind of see it on the corners. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of arrow log flumes have sort of a welded uh, steel tube up underneath as a spine. Um, and then uh, I also use the wooden coaster here as a catwalk. It's just one underneath of the rest of them. So you can go through here and... Uh, select the right one first and I usually only build this up high um, I don't do it on the ground um, since you can easily get to all those bits and pieces but 
you can see here, one below, and there you are, and you can set this up nicely. Then you just have to get rid of the uh, supports up underneath, which is easy with a support blocker, or you can go in here and take um, take that wooden coaster and then just move it below the surface uh, here, just as far as order of operations goes. Um, the other one that you can use, and I see a lot of people using, is bobsled. Uh, I've used bobsled a number of times. If you look at my log plume in Six Flags Carolina, um, you can see it there. There are some older log plumes on faster corners that have sort of a raised uh, bit on the edge uh, just to give it a little bit of um, uh, kind of additional um, space on either side just for a plume that's moving quickly. Um, so you can get in here and do something similar to that, um, say like that. And if it is colored the same as the other stuff, like in the kind of dull green color, it, it doesn't look bad. And I think that's that's a good way that you can do it as well. I've kind of gotten away from that. I really am a fan of just the mini suspended and then also the wooden coaster. But either one you can do and uh, it'll work just fine. But that's all we have for today. So hopefully uh, you found this useful. Um, in practice, I would tend to bury the Virginia reel, which I did over here, as you can see. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, but it's a good way to build some more realism into your rides and also offer some additional capacity um, and uh, just kind of a fun little trick to do. Uh, and like I said, it's definitely expandable into other options as well. So um, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stick around because the next uh, video uh, we're going to get into some other more exciting things as well, uh, including the uh, two rides and single queue um, attraction for a uh, racing coaster. So uh, until next time, thanks very much for watching and uh, hope you all enjoy the tutorial. Thank you.